Yes, let's do this. Welcome one and all to Build. Now, I'm going to ask you how you're feeling in just a second, but I know, I know what you're thinking. Uh, it's weird to respond and applaud to a recorded man asking for a response, but don't worry. We've thought of everything here. That's why I've enlisted the incredible crew surrounding you at this very moment in this very room. So I am going to ask how you're feeling and how things are going, but when you respond, it's not for me. It's to let them know. So right now, Welcome to Build. How are we all doing? You doing okay? Is everybody doing all right? You feeling good? You having a good day? Has it been a good day? I need to know. It has? Because ha they're going to tell me if, you, if it hasn't. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Well, that's great news. I'm happy to hear that, uh, and, and I'm happy you're here. We have got an amazing lineup. Incredible guests coming out here in just a few short moments. So many incredible guests and a wonderful moderator joining them to boot. Now, if you haven't been to Build before, I'm going to walk you through everything. All right? Don't worry about it. Totally painless process and procedure here. Everybody's going to come on out in a second. They're going to sit in all these chairs, pick up all these mics, drink from all these mugs, okay? And they're going to have a conversation. And once that's done, it's your turn to ask some questions. Get the wheel spinning from now. That's right. Audience Q&A. Wouldn't be billed without it. So think of some great questions. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to do anything crazy like that. Just have the question ready. You'll see people walking around with mics. They're looking for you. All right? So they'll find you. They'll get you a mic. You'll ask your question. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, for those tuning in live, you probably have some questions as well. You always do, right? So go ahead and tweet them at us, at Build Series NYC. Very easy, very simple process. I know you can do it. Uh, if you don't have Twitter, we're not judging you. That's fine. You can still ask a question. Just press the button that says submit a question. I think it's over there. If you're watching in the app, it's probably below the video. That's neither here nor there. Just think of your question, send it on over. And if it's a great one, well, we'll ask it live, and you get to be a part of this here show. Now, uh, we're going to run a video real quick, and then we will get everybody out here, and we will do this thing. But before that, I will remind you that not only can our guests hear you, but, again, incredible crew surrounding you at this very moment looking at your response as I ask you the following question. Are you guys ready to do this thing? Come on, make some noise. Let's do it up right. They came all this way. They're here for you. Come on. There you go. That's how it's done. All right, all right, all right, all right. Enough of that, enough of that. Uh, I think, I think it's, it's that time, isn't it? Yep, all right, I'm getting word right now. It is, in fact, that time to go ahead and roll that clip. <laughs> that day on the beach, it changed you. You want revenge. What'd you think? You're gonna jump from cell to cell taking out terrorists. For starters, yeah. Our people here like your agenda, Mitch. I know exactly what to do with you. So what do I need to know about this guy? He's a warrior. One of the best I've ever known. Some bad shit happened to you. Now you want to go kill terrorists, am I right? Out there, it's about the mission, not about you. Slice a man's throat right here like this. He's testing through the roof. Speed, focus. He's off the charts. I've seen off the charts before. Not like this. You think you're special? Never, ever let it get personal. What is it you think we do here? Kill people who need to be killed. We got a problem. Six days ago, 15 kilos of plutonium went missing. Hey, look at this. It can't be him. It's him, Irene. It's Ghost. Why is this guy after you? Some personal sir? Everything he did there, I taught him how to do it. There's a fucking nuke in play. You got 48 hours to stop him. I trusted you. You should have come for me. Eliminate the target. <sighs> yes, sir. Where's the rest of your team? Where's the new me? This whole thing is just a means to an end for you, isn't it? No. This is just the beginning. Let's give them a round of applause. 
keep it going, guys. Here we go. Pitch. I'd love to hear about how this uh, how this material came to you, sir, and how you started uh, oh, working on it. Yeah, um, I'll well, just get you the mic there. Sure. Oh. <laughs> you guys have been doing it all week. Come on. They're the actors, exactly. Um, it came to me uh, not that long ago, but uh, well, almost two years now. Uh, it's been around. It was developed before I got on board, and then I uh, I got on board when um, the last writer that was involved came on, and he really cracked it by seeing how this guy became who he is. Mm. Especially from the opening scene, if anyone saw the film, yeah. there's an inciting incident that really s sets sort of the emotional engine into gear. So um, that was my hook into it. Yeah. I had read prior drafts. I didn't feel like it was there yet. And once that was found and cracked, yeah. I was in. I mean, fans have really been anticipating this character coming to screen. I mean, did you d deep dive into those books, and how did you modernize it uh, uh, for this era? Well, yeah, American Assassin is not the the novel is not set contemporary, so we felt like it had to be grounded in today because it's. I think it's too topical not to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the inciting incident in this film, as far as his trauma, an act of terrorism, where an act they're of just, terrorism yeah. that he sort of experiences was different in the book. So that was, we made it more today, um, and it's fictional. It's not based on any sort of real beach shooting or a yeah. uh, real terrorist event. So um, that is a difference from the book. Yeah. As well as, um, you know, Dylan, I found, you know, I think Mitch in the book is a little colder, mm. you know? And yeah. I think that Dylan brought a real sort of three-dimensional humanity and warmth to the character. Yeah. And, um, you're right away, you will go anywhere with him from that. After that first scene, you see what he experienced. He wakes up, what, 18 months later? Mm. Like from a bad dream, and you're just, yeah. he sits up into frame. Look at that shot. Yeah. And you're, you're. <laughs> He's directing right now. He, 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 Dylan shot. Uh, yeah. You're right with him. Yeah. And it was really important to be on this character's shoulders from the get go. Rather How than did you find uh, Dylan for this role? How did I find him? I looked at a picture online. No. <laughs> Actually, uh, I wasn't that familiar with the young men's uh, work. Yeah. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I hadn't seen uh, a Teen Wolf or uh, the Maze Runner film. Whoa. <laughs> Some fans out here. My daughter knew. <laughs> and I, uh, I swear, this is true. I had my first conversation, and there was, you know, names. And I saw, yeah. I saw Dylan. I'm like, that's the, that's the guy. And it was... It just his his face. Yeah. I, 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 well, no, I mean, he, I, I just intuited that he was just a three-dimensional, real guy. He could be like my son's older friend. Yeah. You know, a a uh, 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 boy, ne uh, a young man next door. Yeah, exactly. Kind of quality. So that's what brought me in. And then, of course, I watched his work, and mm. I even saw, you know, uh, Deep Water. <laughs> Deep Water Horizon, exactly. And, fantastic um, film. I was in, and then we met and um, took a few conversations. There we go. <laughs> Dylan, what'd you think about, uh, there we go, you guys are having a private conversation right now. Sorry, what was that, man? No worries, no worries. Uh, what'd you think about the character Mitch Rapp? What excited you about him? Um, uh, you know, when I first read it, I was immediately taken with the role. I, I you know, especially just um, as an actor looking for parts, I felt like it was, uh, it was a really strong role, something too that I've, felt like was really um, emotional and believable and something, again, uh, that operates in this really topical and relevant landscape, you know? And so I just felt like, um, I, I just, the arc to me immediately spoke to me and I felt like I wanted to, uh, you know, be that guy to portray it. And um, I love where he starts. I love the subject matter. Um, again, uh, uh, it's topical. And also though, there's something about, um, there's something fresh about seeing a guy, you know, um, come to be this assassin. You know, we usually kind of just pick up with them. Uh, yeah. And I liked that idea, too. And I, and I felt that how he comes to, to be this guy um, was really powerful and just really uh, realistic, too. And something that had the potential to be something authentic and um, commercial and um, something I could sink my teeth into as an actor. So, yeah, I loved it all around. Yeah. I mean, Michael mentioned that, that act of a terrorism that sort of transforms you. I mean, you go through a transformation on screen. I mean, you're a regular guy, and something that's love that you love is taken away from you, and then 
the next thing we see you, you're all bolt up, you're out there, you're doing a punching bag. I mean, did you go that <laughs> physical transformation for real? Is that something you did in real life, you know, bulking I, up? and? I, yeah, I tried as much as I could. I mean, I did, I trained uh, at the beginning of the film, obviously, and then we shot the opening. You know, it wasn't like I had like six months off or cast like castaway or something to like lose 60 pounds, you know, so like it was it was a it was a tough thing. But I really wanted some uh, physical contrast from the beginning to a year and a half later. There had to be, you know, so I um, I tried to just get in the best shape I could uh, for the beginning of the film um, when we started shooting and then for the most of the duration of shooting. And then when it got to the point where it was about a month out from the last week, which is when we were going to be shooting the uh, opening beach scene. Um, I tried to just lose as much as I could of it and stop training and yeah. um, as much as I could. You know, it was tough though. We can to we can tell you stop training. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired from That's Ghost no secret, over there. Bro. Ghost is shooting. It's still on. <laughs> I mean, what 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 did you excited you about uh, Ghost Taylor? What you what you like about the script? Uh, one, I haven't gone down this path as an actor. It's a lot of fun to dive into. Um, I actually loved how personal it was between the three guys, uh, which leaves a lot of relatability to him as well, which you don't find in a lot of villains. It's not evil for the sake of evil or violence for the sake of violence. It's driven for a, a hard purpose. And I think it's, it's always the scariest with these type of guys where it's more a matter of fact. And he's so bought into this idea of what he's doing that like, that's the scariest part of it. Like, there's, there's no more reason, there's no more anything. This is what he's doing. And, and um, as an actor, that's fun to dive into. Yeah. And who doesn't want to, you know, put, do that kind of shit to Keaton? <laughs> that's why I wanted to, I would so have to ask that about was that. I mean, casting Michael Keaton, how'd you, how'd you get him aboard? Uh, with Michael? Yeah. Um, I always wanted to work with him. Yeah. Um, you know, we met, we talked about the character. It was important to him that, and to me, from the get-go, that the character was worked uh, from a psychological standpoint rather than just being the physical part. But, you know, Michael ultimately brought both, but he wanted to make sure that we tapped into his, form uh, him being formidable mm. through his eyes yeah. and the way he talks and the way he holds your gaze. And you could see that in the first scene when we introduce his character, just the way he handles um, Mitch, because there was older drafts where they get into a you know a, a knockdown fight in a barn, and or in front of his house, and then I decided it'd be way better for him to just like you know I'm not going there, kid. Are you <laughs> kidding? Because he calls him out right yeah. there. So that was a little change we made, and that was like you know once we started to work that with the character, I think Michael was like then on board for sure. Yeah. You know, um, and plus he's got a, such a um, I didn't know this about he was he's from Pittsburgh, he's a he's a Steelers fan. He you know you could see him in a bar in Pittsburgh you know with a beer and his buddies watching the Steelers you know yeah. cursing throwing shit at the TV whatever. <laughs> um, Michael you know in his final shirt yeah. you know he has a very sort of grounded uh, salt of the earth quality. Yeah, you know, it works so perfectly. What's it like to square off with Michael Keaton guys? You both have scenes where you sort of uh, take him on. <laughs> Underwhelming comes to mind. <laughs> Didn't think much of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, move on. Yeah, there we go. Move on, exactly. How about the gun training? Were you guys, there we go. <laughs> Listen, if you guys don't want to go there, Michael Keaton, come on, he's a legend. Yeah, he's a legend. He's yeah. great. Um, it was, uh, you know, my, with Michael, he immediately made me feel comfortable just um, uh, to dive in with him. You know, I mean, he just, he... He never treated me like a kid, too. That was really important, I think. Um, always treated me with respect. Always uh, respected my opinion, my thoughts, my notes. Um, um, so I have a lot of respect for that, you know, in him. And um, and he's a guy, you know, you grow up watching. And so finally to be able to be with on set, I mean, first of all, it's kind of a trip. And then secondly, you know, it's, it's really interesting to observe how he goes about it, you know? Yeah, how about you, Taylor? Yeah, I don't think this is on, to be honest. <laughs> We're only listening to Michael right here, exactly. Yeah, no, yours is on for sure. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. oh, never mind then. <laughs> uh, look, I mean, it was a big reason why I signed on, you know. it's a, That whole scene, there's a sequence where 
ghost tortures him and it's that's really the whole movie to me as a, as the motivation stands is who ghost is why he's doing it um the physical part of it um so it's a huge scene and you want to be able to go to bat with someone else who's you know a gamer and just you know that's going to bring the best out of you so it was a three-day shoot and um i enjoyed it you know not just torturing you enjoy but torturing with him. Uh, michael yeah, keaton yeah, is yeah. what you're saying um but yeah so it was a big reason to come on board yeah and then talking about the physicality you guys have a couple of face-offs uh you're slapping dylan in the face uh you guys are fighting on yeah. the boat the that double slap <laughs> he does it twice in a row were you doing those stunts for real were you taking those slaps for real or uh were you uh no <laughs> taylor said <laughs> You were going like 70%, is that what you're saying? He could only take no. one slap. <laughs> we did. <laughs> if we're going to do two, pull it, pull it. Yeah. Get the medic. We're going to do really two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Michael, please continue. No, yeah. No, no, no. no, he actually really hit the uh, female spy, though. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That he wanted <laughs> to be authentic. To I was adamant. The ghost I needed flying. to do that. Ghost is a uh, misogynist, yeah. so it was He's important that he really exactly. hit. Oh, God, no. Yeah. <laughs> Do tell me about the stunts. I mean, diving deep. You guys have sort of done stunts in your other films. I mean, what was it like to dive into these ones and uh, getting in there as much as you could? Um, well, for me, it was really important uh, just for the character, too, and just establishing how he uh, moves. And, you know, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to be this guy. You know, I wanted uh, him to come from me. So, um, And uh, I'd also, you know, just uh, as an actor, had never done lengthy fight choreography before, too, so, and always... Uh, thought I'd like it and enjoy it, and I did a lot, and uh, it, was, uh, it was always very meticulous, too. We'd, we'd really know the fights. Um, we could probably do them blindfold, I feel like, by the time we got okay, let's to Let's do one right and... here. Let's... <laughs> oh, you have blindfolds. Oh, good, good, good. We just totally miss everything. Walked into that one. Uh, I will say, you know, you got to tip the hat to Mike and, and the stunt crew as well for this type of fight, which I've never seen before. Yeah. I mean, even reading it when we're in stunt rehearsals, it was like, I don't even know logistically how we're going to yeah. do this, you know? Yeah. But it, it's it's really cool how the boat is its own character in the fight as well and how it separates us, how we reconnect. And mm. to have two assassins that train through the same program, right. I was fascinated with. Um, and honestly, I'd want to know who would win between those two kind of... You know, I think that was really cool, too, uh, of them coming together that way. Yeah, and this this uh, training montage in this film is a little more intense than others. I mean, you're doing jujitsu, you're doing gun training. I mean, were you actually uh, participating in that? Did you actually study some of those martial arts as well? Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, for about six weeks, uh, I went to... What's going on? Sorry, that just He's was unusually on, loud. Assassin. He's always dialed into his surroundings. I was like, am I like hearing? Cat and heat or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I hearing something? He's assessing no. threats. I had no idea. <laughs> am I crazy? Wasn't there just something going on? The what training's was, kicking in. What was the question? Um, right? The, right? You heard it, right? <laughs> um, the jujitsu, the gun training. I yeah, well, that. again, the, again, um, you know, that's that was something, too, um, Credit to Buster on this, you know, our, our stunt coordinator. I think he, you know, he's a grappler um, um, going back 25 years. And uh, I think it was his idea, too, to have that kind of, uh, to have Mitch be that kind of mixed martial arts grappling style, you know, which I think is cool and fresh. And again, not something we totally see all the time. And um, uh, so, yeah, so because uh, that, that the, you know, he had, he had told my trainer who I was training with in L.A. at the time, um, uh, that there was going to be a lot of jiu-jitsu involved, so he started taking me to a jiu-jitsu gym and stuff uh, twice a week. Um, and just really interesting, man. I mean, you know, I'd never been... Uh, I never trained for any fighting styles or mixed martial arts like that or anything, so it was really cool to learn about and be educated on and um, something I definitely want to continue with. And, uh, yeah, I found it really cool. It was great. It's fantastic. Michael, why don't you tell me a little bit about bringing in some experts? I'm sure, you know, you're. this is a fictional character. You There's some... There we go, Ghost. No, Yost. Oh, yeah, Yost. Let's talk about well, him a little yeah. bit. He's, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Yost is, uh, was in the CIA, uh, worked with them. He was one of our consultants. I also consulted with Mossad uh, in the writing of the script. How do you and approach them about uh, having them consult on a script? Well, he was brought in by the studio. He had already been involved with an earlier draft. Um, but when I spoke with um, Nissan, um, the uh, Mossad consultant, 
it was all about the, um, uh, how should I put it? It was, he really, really understood this idea that I, we wanted to get into the script that the, especially Dylan doesn't look the part mm. that this idea. <laughs> No, 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 no. What I mean is dress, dress. You know, this whole thing, dressing like a kill, dressing like a deer, killing like a lion, is a line I put in. I got that line. For, he said it differently, more of the Israeli version. He said gazelle or something. Yeah. Um, I made a deer, which is more American. Yeah. But it, it's just, and the, the the Mossad guys mm. and the guys who are experts who do this. Mm. Are they? They don't look like an assassin. They look like a boy next door quality. Mm. So um, <laughs> no, but that was one thing that was so interesting about Dylan because I think it's fresh. I think he's an assassin and a operative of this guy's skills of the new millennium. Because yeah. you're used to like Schwarzenegger or or Stallone, and that all, was all great for that time. But I think <laughs> in our new fresh time, to have someone that you don't expect. Yeah. And that was what I was really working with Nissan about. And then Yoast, um, there's a lot to talk about. The Yoast is from an American. Mm -hmm. Love this guy. I actually put him in the movie. He's in a scene oh, where. Yeah. Was, was he? Oh, he's straight. I think that's that, fine. I think these guys can, can speak to Yoast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you guys talk about um, some stories that Yoast uh, gave you that informed the character, perhaps? Well, Yoast yeah. was a huge resource for us. I mean, the entire film, uh, um, with everything, he made everything. Uh, more grounded. He was always on top of every, er, all the little things that you know um, go a long way. And then when you you're seeing a film on a screen, and especially guys who really do this stuff in real life, and they uh, know you know the inner workings of of it, like they're gonna catch these things. And so he was there monitoring that all the entire time. He handled our gun training and stuff. And for me, you know, I, I have uh, minimal experience in that. You know, so he was huge for me on that. And um, would give us suggestions too that would entirely shape scenes. Uh, the the gun range scene, you know, was was totally his idea and uh, something we jumped on immediately because, again, anything that we can ever get that's that's you know authentic like that and realistic and that just that just informs the character, informs the story, and it, and, it, and it makes it uh, believable. And um, that this guy's training himself and and looking up, you know, how CIA guys train themselves and he's doing it himself at a gun range. That's just cool, you know. That's 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 the character. And for me too, you know, Yost is uh, somebody who also, you know, experienced uh, tragedy at a young age, you know, like this character, and it drove him to pursue that that life, you know. So it's it's unbelievable too, and, and incredibly informative to me that as the actor playing this guy, um, to know that that does exist out there, and that actually there's there's a correlation there in a way too, and 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 um, these guys, you know, it 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 does. Um, it, it, it's not uncommon for for guys who end up in the as a SEAL or CIA, you know, black ops, um, to have some kind of tragedy that they stem from, and that to me is the most interesting part about the Something story. Something that does isolate them a little bit, yeah. where they feel a, a little bit isolated from society. Sometimes it's almost a misanthropic kind of impulse, yeah. in a way. And he, yeah, I mean, I learned about him, and it was, and he's so wise, and also. Incredibly gentle, but mm. powerful at the yeah. same time. He helped make sense of all these training sequences because, mm. you know, I, I do something in a, a range with four guns. They get bigger and bigger. And like, right. He's like, all right, that doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It's just a picture right now. Mm. He says, well, what we would do, mm. and then he would sort of ground it in the real. Yeah. Like timing, like keeping yeah. time and all that, and then stepping over this line, yeah. you know, that which you cannot do at a fire range. They would kick you out in yeah. a second. Uh, as well you as survived, the, <laughs> as well as the uh, IKEA, we call it the IKEA sequence. This is home furnishing sequence when him and another agent are have to find the bad guy, you know, type of thing. So he was really helpful with making it um, make sense. <laughs> Cause, yeah. It sounds because like I just had a set piece, you know, yeah. and it, and then he would be helpful. So he would literally come into my office and we'd talk about it, and then Dylan would get involved, and then it would be. Yeah. That's amazing. What we shot. You guys sound like you have a fascination with it still. I mean, is there, do you guys have the next film in order? I mean, I'd love to see a second one of this film. There's a little bit of a I can tell there. you, I'll be back for sure. <laughs> Ghost will be back. Um, one thing, yeah. I, if anyone saw the film, there's the, the coda part of the film when he is, re, um, is on a beach. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought it was it's ghost floating in the water for a second. Oh, there we go. And then he comes out, and it's much rap. <laughs>
Yeah, everyone thinks that. I was, um, <laughs> you know, when you're so close to something, I'm like, what? That <laughs> there's, a lot of that yeah, there's a lot of theories out there. Well, we have some questions of the audience that we're going to go to right now. Hi, guys. Um, I wanted to ask how you've grown as a person since becoming an actor, and what would you change about the acting business? Damn. You, cool. you want to go, or you want me to start? Um, no, you, you. Uh, um, interesting. Good question. Creative, thoughtful. <laughs> um, um, how I've changed as I become an actor. I mean, you know, <clears throat> for me, a lot, a lot has changed in a lot of ways. Just because um, uh, before I was an actor, I mean, I was just a normal kid, you know, going to high school and stuff. And so, um, so it, you know, in a ton of ways, the what are the the talking, man? I can hear the talking. <laughs> Is that what's going on? Don't We've got to lower you something. Guys, okay. Um, um, in a, in a, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, it's, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's felt like, um, years since I, I, my life completely changed, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, growing as a person, you know, uh, you, 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 you gain a lot of, I've gained a lot of experience as an actor. I've gained a lot of work experience, responsibility, you know, um, things like that. Uh, um, becoming an adult pretty quick all of a sudden after just being able to support myself, um, before I anticipated, uh, to be able to, um. And you meet a lot of people. I've met a lot of great friends, uh, friends I'll have for life. Um, and, um, and you know, just experience and, and things like that. But then also it's more about, you know, how you grow as a person in your personal life as well, too, that that kind of takes more maintenance as you become an actor because you're, you're gone a lot. And um, you have to really work at keeping up with your personal life, too, and your home life and your friends and relationships and stuff because that will also inform you as an actor, too. So, um um, yeah, I, I think I've, I've totally talked to you off about that. So, <laughs> so Taylor is, uh... No, I mean, uh, well, I want to know what you would change about the business. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> okay, all, right, <laughs> um, all right, well, I have some opinions on this as well, uh, I guess. Uh, you're hilarious. Um, um, you know, there's a lot, there's, the, the business is, it's ever changing. It's always, you know, it, it goes, it goes through a lot of uh, um, changes all the time. I think right now we're in in this uh, generation um, of regurgitating material. Right now, um, everything's a sequel. Everything's a comic book thing. Everything's an Avengers movie. It's, uh, it's, and it's, and it's not great because what it does is, uh, you know, um, as 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 good as and fun as those movies are, and as someone who used to enjoy them, um, <laughs> to be honest. Um, um, it's it, it it cuts down on original content out there, and and it and it, it doesn't promote um, original material anymore. It, it sort of becomes uh, uh, the business is very um, uh, reactant based, you know. And so like if if something works, they they adjust and and uh, and and do that, you know. So with Marvel, right, and um, and things like that. Uh, so now the business is sort of changed course into just doing things like that. They're like, okay, that's that's what's working. Sequels, sequels are working. Things that have already been done are working. And so that that just for me, I don't know. As just an you know, as an actor, I, I'd like to see um, more original content, you know, and um, uh, things like that. You know, just just new, just new, fresh material. Things that, that that's where this all started, you know, and and that's where it should continue. Well, to <laughs> me, uh, <laughs> well said. Uh, man, that's a heavy, long-winded answer to that. But in short. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll just say I feel incredibly fortunate um, to be taking I'm I'm going somewhere. What I what I love is just I get to explore like growing up I'm from like a tiny town, but growing up you're not exposed to these kind of experiences, these people, these life lessons in a sense of just being you know. Eight years ago, you play a South African during the apartheid or. I just played a cult leader in Waco, or you get to learn just these extreme beats that happen in our history that not only educate you about different people, different pasts, but you grow more in the sense of just having an ability to open yourself up and try to understand the other side or where your point of view is coming or where it's not coming from. So I'm, I'm really fortunate about that. And I think the one of the best things about it too is that Man, we're spoiled. We are, you know, I just I came back from Africa last 
on Monday night and you're working with these organizations, these kids and stuff like that. So like the access we have to make a difference, to do this kind of stuff is incredible. And I think that's something that I'd like to make the whole thing full circle. Uh, that's something I'd love to see even more from other actors or actresses or people in the business because we are spoiled. Not that they're, there's some amazing stuff going on, but I do know that we can do a little bit more because, like it or not, we do have a, you know, a platform. Yeah. Why don't you, the name of the organization, if you don't mind sharing Yeah, it's it. called the uh, African Children's Choir. They've been around for 30-plus years, take kids from war-torn areas, slums, villages, in the seven different African countries, and uh, they house, school, and feed these kids and create a choir within the group that travels the world and raises awareness and money for their own cause and their families. And this organization takes them from three through university, which is amazing. There's a doctor that I was just with named Robert in Uganda, um, who literally is the leading doctor in Africa for liver and blood and uh, figuring what's going on with, obviously AIDS is a huge ordeal there, uh, and obviously worldwide, but especially where he's from. So. Um, you truly see these guys that are like from beyond nothing to becoming like literally one of the world leaders in this. So it's really cool to see. It's a great cause. Um, next question. Um, hi. Um, I actually want to ask Taylor, what's the biggest challenge while filming American Assassin? Uh, Dylan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> next question. <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> the biggest challenge, I would have loved, I just came off this other firefighting movie. Um, only the Brave. I'm only the Brave, that. yeah, that comes out in October, uh, which is obviously relevant with all these wildfires everywhere, right? There's over 100 in BC right now where I'm from, and obviously with LA getting hit right now real hard. Um, and it's the story of the Granite Mountain Hotshots, but... Um, yeah, I guess I'd, I'd, I, I'm a big fan of prep. So I wish I had even more time to prepare. And, um, but that would be my only, like, if I was to play the violin. <laughs> I, would, I would whine about that. <laughs> Dylan, hardest challenge in this? I wasn't asked. But... <laughs> so I got, I got to answer all the she questions. looking at you. <laughs> she specifically said for Taylor, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Is there something wrong with my hearing, man? <laughs> uh, one more question. Hi, uh, I'm Kim. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, um, I was wondering when you approach a property like this where there's so much that's important inside the mind of the characters, especially like to delineate between two guys that are trained the same way, but they're approaching it in a different way. And in the books, there's a lot going on internally. For filmmaking, I really wonder like what you have to think about to get across so much internal stuff without you know, dialogue, like how are you going to approach putting that, what's going on in their minds on the screen? Yeah, you hope not to rely on exposition and dialogue, as you said. I think it's story is to understand what the empathy really is to understand what the character has gone through. So um, when the under, when the I think, in my opinion, because I've dealt with a lot of dark uh, dubious characters in my career, I think when they understand them fully and they and they empathize, you're in. And then it then the next step is to find a great player, a great actor to you know play that. But uh, that's for me as a director, that's the most important part. And I have a curi stubborn, I guess, curiosity about people, you know, like darker characters. And I always try to find the light in the dark, so to speak, the empathy, the uh, the grays or good people do bad things, bad people do good things kind of thing. And I know that's sort of popular now, the anti-hero, but I, it's, 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 it should be more in movies because television now has obviously really gone there. So he was saying Marvel and, and uh, sequels and all of that and remakes, yeah, Hollywood needs to trust, especially the younger generation, more that they are smarter than you think and they want smarter stuff. Because two hours of storytelling is a completely different medium than TV. 
you know, I guess, you know, and the power, it's still a better medium, in my opinion. I still love a great movie. So Well said. I mean, that's definitely in play in American Assassin, which everybody can see uh, September 15th, if that's correct. And uh, tell all your friends, guys. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you.